Hello adventurers, welcome back to Geek Peak. Today we are going to be doing something a little different. We are ramping up to start some actual plays on our channel with some of the people on our Discord channel, uh, link below. So what I'm going to be doing is taking you through how to create a character on D&D Beyond, which is a very useful tool for not just for online play, uh, because it does link to virtual tabletops for dice rolling and information and things like that. But just in general, it's a good way to create a character and it has some fail safes in there so you're not accidentally doing things incorrectly, especially if it's your first time. I do recommend the DM still take a look at everybody's character sheets before playing just to make sure. Uh, and I'll get into more things that I have seen personally incorrect or mistakenly done later in the video. But for right now, I created a whole second account. This is all going to be uh, everything that you can get for free on D&D Beyond. I will show you some of the stuff you can unlock with purchases uh, towards the end of the video. We're not going to get into like optimizing the character, this is just the functionality of D&D Beyond. So this is going to be the main screen, obviously this changes based on what's currently out. And I just labeled my profile as Geek Peak Teacher, as I'm going to teach you how to do that. Uh, so you're going to go to Collections, My Characters. For your free account, you are limited on how many characters you can have. You can see here that you have six. We're gonna get right into it and we'll go over the settings in D&D Beyond and things that I feel like you should also be talking about with your DM or if you're a DM watching with your players during a session zero. We are gonna go with just the standard build. At the top, you have your character name. It defaults to the profile name for the account. So Geek Peak Teacher's character. Uh, one of the really cool things, this links to Fantasy Name Generators, which is a fantastic site if you're trying to come up with a name for a dragonborn or an elf or a dwarf or a kobold or literally dozens and dozens of different races and even time frames or certain settings. If you're looking for a name for a place that's like a gothic setting, there's an option for that. We're not going to get any further into that, but there's a link here that takes you right to that website which is a fantastic website. I use it all the time, but you can just hit select more. It'll go through five more random options. Uh, we're going to call ourselves Vassad because that sounds pretty cool. The sources here are things they have on D&D Beyond. This is stuff that just auto defaults to selected being yes. It doesn't pop up a whole lot in your campaign, but again, these, this, the sources and your partner content, this is stuff you're going to want to talk to with your DM. If you are playing a game with somebody that has more content, they can share their content so you don't necessarily have to buy it yourself. We're going to leave, we're going to turn this all to off for this first character just to avoid confusion. And same with the partner content, we'll leave those off. <clears throat> Dice rolling. Once you get to the character sheet in D&D Beyond, there's an option to just click a button and it'll roll dice for you digitally. Uh, we're going to leave that on. You don't have to use it. Obviously, you can still use physical dice in the real world and just reference your character sheet. Uh, but we'll leave that on just so I can show you how that functions as well. Optional features, this uh, stuff came out, I believe, with Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. We can customize your origin. We're not doing that. We're not going to do the optional class features either. This is bare bones, how this white website functions. We're going to make a cleric of level one. Advancement type, there is milestone and XP. Most people play with milestone. If you play with XP, again, this is something that you need to talk with your DM or your players about in session zero. Same with hit point. Uh, fixed, there is a set number that every class has based off their hit die. Every time you level up, you get that number plus your con modifier automatically applies to it. If you do manual, there is the option for rolling. So you know you could get higher because it's, it's an average for the fixed uh, hit point type. So you can get higher or you can get lower. We're going to leave it fixed for right now. Uh, prerequisites for feats of multi-class requirements. We're not going to get into that since we're only going to do a level one character, but I'm going to leave them checked. Uh, same with the level scaled, level scaled spells. It's not going to show up again because it's level one character, but when you're at higher levels, you can upcast your spells and it'll show that based on like what level you're casting it as. Uh, we're going to use encumbrance. We're going to ignore coin weight. It's just something that usually doesn't really come up in a D&D game. You've got, you know, 50 coins weighs one pound. How many coins do you have to have before it actually starts affecting your weight? A lot. Um, ability score modifier display. Modifiers top or scores top. This is strictly visual. 
and it all comes down to how you want it to look. Uh, I prefer modifiers on top since that's the number that generally gets used more. And then this is more settings on, so if you're in a campaign, you and everybody else in the campaign will be able to see it. This is normally what you want to do if you're joining a game, that way your DM can review everything. Uh, public, you can make public characters. Uh, maybe you're, you have a really cool NPC that you think other people would like to use in their game. You can make it public, private, only you can view your characters, nobody else has access to it. We're going to leave it as campaign only. And then if you see here, it's going to take us through one through five steps. So we're going to go right to the race. Again, we're going super basic. But again, this is all that I have with just a free account. You've got a wide selection of races. The standard stuff, Dragonborn, Dwarf, Elf. But you also have some different Genasi. You have some different types of uh, dwarves. You got the Hill Dwarf, Mountain Dwarf, Aarakocra. That's not in the player's handbook to start. Um, you've got... The variant Azamar as well. We're gonna be easy and just stick with human. We're not gonna do the variant human because that involves feats. Um, but when you click on the race, it breaks. It brings up a little bit about that race and then their racial traits. This one is plus one to all ability scores and an extra language. Most races they are locked in on what your modifiers are going to be. Uh, the human is you just get plus one to everything because you have you're kind of lacking in other stuff. Other races have dark vision, they get some sort of bonus proficiency. The regular human base race doesn't, so they get a plus one to all of their ability modifiers. We're gonna choose that, and then it takes us to our second language. Again, it doesn't really matter, but we're gonna pick Dwarvish. But this is where you can go through, and this is again something, I'm gonna say the term session zero a lot. This is something you're gonna wanna talk to you about in your session zero. You don't wanna like metagame too much, but you don't want to pick primordial and it never come up. A lot of people will pick more traditional languages, uh, you know, uh, elven, El elvish, dwarvish. Those are more common, so you'll see those. But if you want to pick something like Loxodon, it's very rare that you're going to meet somebody that also speaks Loxodon or find an item that has the description written in Loxodon. So again, talk to your DM. You know, hopefully they're able to be like oh yeah you're probably gonna hang out with a bunch of elves so then you want to pick something like that uh we're gonna go with dwarvish just because it's fun and that's it for our race that's it all the race stuff is done we're gonna go on to our class i debated which one to show you for a tutorial video because everybody's like oh a human fighter is the most basic but then i was like well spell casting is a big part of DD, so let's do wizard but then i also felt like that doesn't function that doesn't have the martial abilities of a fighter and I'm trying to get everything together in one video. So we're going to go with a cleric. But again, these are just all the base classes. Once you get into wanting to unlock further stuff and actually having to purchase assets, that's when it's going to affect like your subclasses. Um, so if there's a certain cleric domain you want to play, it might not be in the regular version, but you can unlock it and then you'd have access to it to pick, make that character. But we're going to pick a cleric for now. Um, this gets us our spell casting. This gets us our martial stuff. So I can show you those examples once the character is fully created. This breaks down everything about it. Your hit die is a D8. Primary ability is wisdom. Saving throws, wisdom and charisma. Uh, and this is stuff you get at first level. You scroll down, it says what you can look forward to as your character grows and levels up. Ability score improvement at fourth level. The feature of destroy and dead. Uh, so we're gonna be a level one cleric. Now. For spellcasters, this is where it starts to get a little confusing because under class, you now have two options. You have your class features, which every character is going to have, and then you have your spells, which we're going to get into in just one minute. Hit points, like I said, it's 1d8 per level, plus your con modifier. At level 1, you always start with your max hit die, plus your constitution modifier. As you level up, it's based off your hit die, so for a cleric, it's 1d8, or yeah, 1d8, or 5 is what the fixed type is. Uh, plus your con modifier. So if I were to go to level 2 here, that bumps up to 13 because we don't have a con modifier, so just 8 plus 5. And this is also where you would go to level up. But we're going to go back to level 1. It's going to say, hey, it's going to change some stuff. We're going to confirm it. Drops us back down to our 8 HP, and we're going to keep going through here. Proficiencies are based off of your class. There are some set ones that you can choose from based off of that. 
we're not gonna like I said we're not optimizing a character so we're just gonna pick medicine and religion those are pretty basic cleric skills and then we are going to go to our spell casting uh, as it said that spell casting is based off of wisdom and then it just breaks down how spell casting works you have your cantrips which are like level zero spells you can cast those an infinite amount of times um, they don't require any sort of special uh, needs uh, preparing and casting spells, spell casting ability, spell save DC is a big one, especially for clerics because they have a lot of like things that affect other characters outside of just damage. So spell save DC is always going to be 8 plus something plus something. In this case it's your proficiency bonus, which will increase as you level up, and your wisdom modifier, which also should uh, increase with you as you level up to a certain extent. Uh, this is what your... DM would roll for their characters when you cast certain spells on like the enemies you have to make a blank save based off your spell save so your spell save is 14 they need to make a dexterity saving throw they roll their dex modifier and if they meet or beat it then they succeed and the spell tells you you know most spells are half damage uh, but some of them are uh, if they make the save, then nothing happens, especially something like a stunned effect or uh, like Zone of Truth, for example. Spell attack modifier is just like when you're attacking with a weapon, it's your proficiency bonus plus your wisdom modifier. That's your roll to hit. Um, the Divine Domains, there are, well, there's only one option here for a cleric to start. Um, and there are other options in the marketplace, which like I said we'll get into later, but we're going to pick Life Domain Cleric. You get a bonus proficiency you're now proficient with heavy armor what that means is when you have heavy heavy armor equipped you get the bonus of its defense if you don't have that armor proficiency it doesn't it's not as effective on you so you don't get that bonus to it uh, and then disciple of life is your healing spells are more effective this comes off of your domain um, and then once you start adding in other levels your other abilities are going to be listed down here it's all sorted by level and if you were to add another class if you do get into multi-classing just press the button here it pulls up the same list of classes from before the cleric has already been selected so you can't select it again but we're not going to do that so that's all of our abilities for level one cleric we're going to go into our spells so prepared spells two this is based off of the domain that we picked and then here we have known spells cantrips we have zero of three because we haven't selected any yet and we don't have any prepared spells yet, but we do know 13. So we're gonna sort by spell level for our cantrips first, just click this, it's green. So now if we scroll down, these are all gonna say cantrip. Uh, we are going to pick guidance, uh, mending, and sacred flame. Now, because we can only learn three cantrips, once we've selected that third one, this learn button is now grayed out. We can no longer select it. Uh, if you go to change one, you would have to click remove, then light back up. And then we got Spare the Dying. Cool. Um, and then for our, we know all of these spells, we can only prepare one. So we are going to pick, we're going to prepare Guiding Bolt. And again, these, these gray out once we have that one spell prepared. But that's it for spells. Really not that bad. It gets more confusing like the more spells you have because you're like, well, I know all these spells, but I can only prepare this many spells. So you can... Like if you're going into a fight against a bunch of fire stuff, you can, you know, create or destroy water, creating water and throwing at the enemy. Uh, detect magic is always good to have for pretty much any purposes. If you're going into like a political intrigue setting, maybe detect poison and disease is good. Maybe somebody spiked the wine and you don't want to drink spiked wine. Cast detect poison and disease. Now you know. But this is something you can change day to day uh, after a long rest. But that's your spells. That's it. And now if you look at your prepare spells, you've got your cantrips listed. These ones that are always prepared because of your domain. And then your guiding bolt that we selected. And this says right here, plus two to hit. Uh, we're going to get into the abilities next. Go over next. So this is all of your ability scores. We're going to do standard array for now. And again, we're not trying to optimize this. But we are going to pick wisdom as our highest because that's our spell ca casting modifier. You can debate back and forth on the rest of your abilities. 
or you can just make a character that you want maybe you want to be a cleric that's super charismatic that's not wrong that's not bad it's your character do what you want the book and i also suggest making whatever your class's main ability is should always be your highest stat so in this instance wisdom for a cleric because that's how you cast your spells constitution is always a good one for everybody to have that's where you get your hit points from uh, so the higher the constitution the more hit points again this isn't about optimizing character this character might suck whatever this is just to show you how the website works this here will list by race what your bonus increases are and if you look here these this is the number that i picked for it but this is what the total is because as a human i get a plus one to everything and it says that right here this breaks it down a little further so my strength total score is 15 which means every time I roll for strength, not including proficiencies, which we'll get into, I add a plus two to that. So if I have to make a strength check, roll my d20, add plus two. Uh, also down here, there is a button for dice based off of what type it is. So if you wanna just check, yeah, 16 plus two, total of 18. Um, so yeah, this shows that the base score is 14, my racial bonus for being a human, plus one. I don't have any other bonuses. This is where you would go to override the score if you're doing something, again, you have to talk to your DM, uh, but if you're making a character that has 15s and everything, um, or something that like affected their abilities that lowered one of their abilities, you can change here to override it, so that way it affects the character sheet later on. But yeah, this is just the standard array. We're going with that. We'll go on to the description. Um, this pulls up your name generator again. Uh, so if you don't have a name yet, you can still link to that site and take a look. And you can change your language now from before if you want to change that. Backgrounds affect certain bonuses to the character. Uh, you might get extra proficiencies uh, with skills, maybe a tool set, a dice set, or like a, ga uh, like a gaming set. Um, you can even get something as far as being able to interact with certain communities more than another player would. For a cleric, we are going to go with an acolyte. Uh, again, just doing super basic stuff. These are all the options you have on a free account. Kind of limited, but this is a lot of the stuff that's just in the player's handbook as well. And then it tells you what the acolyte actually does. And you get the bonus skill proficiency of insight, so you're now more insightful. And you get to pick another skill as well from the list. We're going to go with history because why not? And you get two more bonus languages from the Acolyte background. So we're going to pick Elvish and Draconic because who doesn't want to talk to dragons? This is a cool background feature for the Acolyte Shelter of the Faithful. It lets you kind of just live amongst the people without having to worry about uh, like trying to find an inn to stay. You could probably go with like if you're a cleric of a prominent deity you can go to most places and be like hey i follow blank can i get a room and they're like oh you can stay with us for the night as long as you're not you know a jerk beyond this part right here everything below here is strictly for rp there is some debate on alignment in fifth edition but it hasn't really it doesn't really come up that often if you're a jerk then people will know you're a jerk and they'll treat you accordingly if you're nice same thing uh, but this is more like if you're having a hard time coming up with a backstory for a character or you can't quite figure out how to make them seem more real these are suggested characteristics that you can add to your character sheet but again it's just rp it's not set in stone it's not mechanical at all so you see omens at every event in action the gods try to speak to us we just need to list need to listen you can add that to your character sheet it doesn't really affect your character unless you have the strictest of dms which don't play with them ideals again these are at least the ideals suggest a certain alignment and you can follow that if you want that's this is the stuff that's totally up to you because this is all just for role playing aspects we're gonna go with faith i trust that my dd will guide my actions and then bond uh let's say we owe our life to a priest who took me and when my parents died tragic backstory so edgy Laws. I'm inflexible in my thinking, I'm suspicious of strangers, and I expect the worst of them. We're going to be a little bit insular, so we're going to go with that one. Uh, character details, again, you can choose your alignment. It doesn't mechanically change anything on your character. Rules as written, there are certain items that if you are a certain alignment, you can't use without negative effects. But, again, that's something to discuss with your DM. 
Uh, your faith is just an open text box. You can type in whatever you want. And lifestyle, we are going to pick just poor. This is supposed to be that you're spending two silver pieces a day in town for like your general upkeep of yourself. The more money you have to spend, the better your lifestyle, so you can get a nicer room, better food, a shower more often, things like that. Physical character characteristics, again, these are all just text box. You can type in whatever you want. You have hair, don't. Skin, eyes, height, weight, age, gender. And this is just a reminder of the personal characteristics you selected. And then notes are things you can add in. Again, these are all just text boxes. Uh, you have an ally called Jeff the Barber. And now allies is Jeff the Barber. Ally is Frank the Deli Owner. So now you have these listed as your notes. These will transfer over to the character sheet uh, once we get to that point, which is coming up very soon. But like I said, these are all things just for RP. They don't mechanically affect anything just because you have Jeff as your ally doesn't mean you're ever going to run into Jeff in the game. Um, so now we're going to go on to equipment, and this is where things get real hardcore on the Session Zero discussion because every class has starting equipment already picked or you can just pick the gold i believe with fifth edition you can choose to start with 50 gold and buy your own items or you can just it's always it's easiest just to pick certain equipment because 50 gold like you're not going to be able to buy a plus one sword at level one or anything like that so i always personally recommend choosing starting equipment uh so that's what we're going to do so in this instance you get the options of a mace or a war hammer if proficient we are missing that required proficiency uh, we can still pick the item, but it just makes it harder for us to wield the item and use in combat. So we're going to pick a mace. We're going to pick some chainmail. Um, and these are all either or options all the way down. So we can do scale, leather, or chainmail. A light crossbow and 20 bolts or any simple weapon. We're going to get the light crossbow for the range. The priest pack and the explorer's pack does add items to your character sheet. This is stuff that a lot of people tend to forget to keep up on. Uh, so 10 candles, how often are you remembering, oh, I lit a candle tonight, take off one candle. But again, it's nothing that's going to break the game if you've used 10 candles 11 times. Um, but as the cleric, you did choose between the priest pack, which has some more religious stuff in alms box, two boxes of incense, a sensor, vestments, two days of rations and water skin, or an explorer's pack, which is a little more outdoorsy camping style. So you've got your 50 feet of rope, bedroll, mess kit, torches instead of candles. Um, big one here is a shield and a holy symbol. And the holy symbol, again, it's uh, just RP sake. If you want to have an amulet or an emblem, you know, the emblem could be on your armor maybe, something like that. And then your acolyte starting equipment is a holy symbol, which is a gift when you entered the priesthood, when you first joined. It can be a different one, it can be the same one, it's not, like mechanically, it doesn't really affect anything. Uh, we're going to pick a prayer book, which adds to other possessions, because the prayer book, again, doesn't do anything in-game as far as a mechanical thing. So the, it's not a plus one prayer book or anything like that. Um, five, six of incense, vestments, set of common clothes and then you still get a pouch containing 15 GP. This amount of gold does change based on class. I was just making a wizard earlier to test out the site and the pouch of gold was 10 gold pieces. And then we're just going to add starting equipment. Now this is our current inventory. We currently have 76 pounds of weight. Most of that is gonna be in our backpack and we'll get into like backpack versus storage. The big thing to remember when you add equipment you want to make sure that you are wearing it, equipping it, you're using it, whatever the button here says. So right now we have chainmail, we're not wearing it, so it's not affecting our armor class. So we're gonna click wear, we're gonna use the crossbow bolts and the crossbow itself, and we're gonna wield our mace and wear our shield. If you get into a situation where you have multiple melee weapons, make sure that you are wielding all of them because mechanically it won't show up on the character sheet to be able to attack with it unless you are wielding it. It doesn't matter if you're, if you have four swords and you're wielding all of them, you're not really, that's just the mechanics of the website itself. 
It's not that you're actually trying to hold four swords in two hands at once. It's just easier to have them all equipped, and it doesn't have any like negative effects. The character sheet doesn't think you're trying to hold four swords at once and penalize you. It's just broken down by equipped weapon for each attack. So you want to make sure that you're wielding them or using them. Your other possessions are down here, and you can edit them freely. This is, again, just a text box. You can add in or remove whatever you want. Uh, if you are adding in other extra items, again, level one, talk to your DM. You can search for certain things. Boomerang, club, another crossbow, dagger, dart. This is all listed on here. This is where you'll start to see things restricted by what you have purchased, or in this case, not purchased. Uh, so if there's a very specific item you're looking for, you might have to purchase that book to get it. Uh, but all of your plus one things are in here. But again, this is something you need to discuss with your DM before adding in these extra items because they're not starting equipment. Uh, and then your currency is broken down by 15 gold. I would double check with your DM, but you could probably, like, if you want to automatically, like, break down some gold into electrum or silver, have a couple copper. That way you don't just have 15 chunks of gold in your pocket. But that's, again, as long as you have the total amount of your starting equipment, I'm sure it's fine to break it down like that. So you can now export your character sheet to a PDF. And you can also view your character sheet. Uh, we're going to export this. There's a link here so that you can send it to somebody or you can click to download it. We're going to do that. This is our character. This is Vassad, our level one human cleric. It breaks it down, everything we put into the creator. Here's our character's name, class and level, the player name because the account profile is Geek Peak Teacher, but in this case we can edit it. Human race, acolyte background, mouse and experience, and it breaks down everything we put in for our ability scores, all of our skills, our armor class is currently 18, nice. Uh, max HP of 10 because we only have plus two comm modifier. But it also gives you things like what you can do, your standard actions in a turn, this is what you can do here. Uh, your passive skills are down here. These are your equipped weapons, and this is why I said to make sure that when you have a weapon, you are wielding it, because it lists crossbow and your mace, um, how to hit with it, what type of damage it does, and if there's any certain notes. Um, and as we go further down, this uh, these are your cleric features, uh, the things that clerics can do specifically, so it lists your domain, proficiencies, uh, like we're proficient with heavy armor, um, all of our equipment. This is all the stuff we have currently on us. Uh, allies, Jeff Barber. It does not show our uh, enemies, but these are the personality traits, ideals, bonds, and flaws that we picked. Again, this is all just RP stuff. Uh, these are just blank things, so if you print this out, you have this to write on. These are our spells, and you see here in this column it says prep. So we have prepped, bless, and cure wounds. These are always prepared. These ones are offered. This is not an O, it's a little circle to fill in. But if you have no need for a PDF, you're just gonna be your character sheet. There's the facade in all of their glory. It takes you through all your abilities here at the top. Uh, your proficiency bonus, walking speed, always important. Inspiration is a clickable box. So if you get inspiration from your DM, click it, you have the little sunrise, use it, click it again, it goes away. Uh, this also says up here, you know, Vasada is your human cleric of level one. You can edit this, like how this looks. So you can put in an image of yourself, or if you have a miniature that you've designed or a piece of artwork, change sheet appearance here. First things first is under dark mode, which is just dark mode. I know a lot of people prefer that, but yeah, you can change your portrait, the frame, the backdrop is this is how it looks all like, this is the cleric symbol and there's like mountain artwork from the player's handbook that's all just flavor stuff we're not going to get into that too much but you have here's your hit points if you take damage i got shot with an arrow for three damage type in three hit damage it takes down or just override subtracting from 10 you took three damage you're now at seven press enter or click away i'm sorry and that's your current hp if you do get temporary hit points it's the same thing uh, put that number in and then click away so we have three temp hp is somebody cast heroism or whatever uh as a human we have no defenses this is going to list our resistances immunities and vulnerabilities uh we don't have any currently uh, same with conditions we don't have any active conditions but this is where you would pick 
if you're blinded or charmed, grappled, you can change that and then that's an easier reminder that, oh, I'm blinded. It's going to affect me in some certain way. So this breaks down each type of, so these are all of your actions and you can go further into, so if I just want to make a bonus action, well, I'm a level one cleric. I don't really have any bonus actions right now. As an action, I have one attack per action, but that would be my action. And then let's suggest the other actions you can do here. Attack, cast a spell, dash, dish gauge, all that stuff. So you're in a fight. DM says roll initiative. Just click this button. It's going to roll a d20 for you. It adds in your modifier. Well, in this case, it adds in my negative modifier of an eight. And that's your initiative. If you have a virtual tabletop, which we're not going to get into too much, those usually have their own web extensions that you need to download before. But d, &D Beyond will link up right into most of those that I'm aware of. I'm not an expert in all of them, but I know specifically Roll20, there's a web extension where if I have Roll20, a Roll20 map pulled up over here and I click my initiative, it'll automatically feed that into Roll20 so my DM can see what I rolled. Same with my ability checks, attacks, things like that. What's really cool is all of these numbers, if you're making a deception check with disadvantage, uh, maybe right click, it pulls up your normal roll is usually going to be flat advantage disadvantage click it and then roll it it'll roll the 2d20 ah what a waste of a crit and if you look down here it shows both numbers so that you know for sure that two dice were rolled and the lower was taken i rolled a 20 and an 11 but with disadvantage it becomes 12. same thing with your attacks uh any of these numbers that can be rolled for skill checks abilities saving throws Right click, you can roll with advantage or disadvantage based on the situation. <clears throat> that way you don't have to try and roll it twice or anything like that. And it goes through what your modifiers are, what you're proficient in. And then because I have, this is cool, because I have heavy armor on, it automatically marks my stealth as disadvantage because of the heavy armor. If I were to remove it, that goes away. My AC drops, obviously. But it's just something that you don't have to really think about while you're playing the game uh, down here has my proficiencies and languages all the armors i can wear weapons i can use i'm not proficient with any tools so it says none and then languages that i learn as the game progresses and your character learns more stuff maybe there's a, a spat of downtime and you're talking to gm like hey i want to learn how to speak orc you can click on this settings the settings down here and then you can add in a new proficiency so we're going to go with a existing language and then you choose your option. We learned orc. And then we close this and now orc shows up down here. And that's something you can do on pretty much anything as you're going through the game. Um, you can go in here, your proficiencies. Um, so you're, you're not proficient with investigation, but you can go through and change that to being proficient and now it shows it as proficient, but it also shows it as a different color to let you know that it's modified for some reason. It's not your standard rules as written proficiency. Uh, saving throws are the same way. You can modify those. So as your character levels up, or maybe you get some blessing from a deity that mechanically doesn't have just like an item, maybe you become proficient with saving throws. You can change that and label it as blessing of the divine host or whatever this is your inventory anything that's checked is something that's currently active you're wearing it you're wielding it you're using it but for actions so these are if we're attacking anything just click right on the box plus one a five is going to miss uh, but if i had hit i can then just click damage here it rolls a d8 oh jeez. all right all right facade you are not uh not doing great but yeah these are all of our basic item attacks again and it shows here this is your range 80 feet with crossbow for standard range and then 320 you would attack be attacking with disadvantage spells up here tells you what your modifier is spell attack and then your spell safety you see that i mentioned earlier um, and how many spells you have per level as you level up you'll get some more of these and also once you unlock second level third level spells the scroll wheel will be able to scroll down further and you'll see those as well 
Things that can be upcast, like Cure Wounds, will show up under each level of spell, so that if you were to upcast it, it is automatically modified to have that higher effect. When you click Cast, it checks the box, but it doesn't actually like do the effect yet, so you still have to click this to... Oh, I'm good at healing at least. So have to click this box to actually roll the die, or again, roll them physically in the real world, that's fine. Uh, short rest, long rest, we'll wrap this up with. Short rest pulls up the screen where you're able to use your hit dice um, to heal, click the box, press the number, it automatically applies it, and then you take a short rest, it does a little countdown to confirm it, click confirm, it'll show short rest taken, and any relevant abilities will automatically reset on the character sheet. Uh, the cleric doesn't currently have any. Uh, so nothing's going to change, we still have our one spell used. But we go through another day of adventuring, take a little bit of damage, the temporary HP goes away because we took 7 damage. Now we're going to take a long rest, it's going to give us our full hit points back and up to one hit die and our spell slot. If we select this, say we cast our second spell, now it says two spell slots. So you get back all your spells on a long rest, it'll reset your used hit dice and uh, HP. We're going to take a long rest, confirm. Now those are currently unchecked, our hit points are back, and if we go back to the short rest, the box is now unchecked. That's your character sheet. This went on a little bit longer than I had planned. The last thing I wanted to show you is if you do want to pick something very specific for a class, for a race, for an item, search for it, and it'll usually pull up that it's locked because it comes from a special source book. If you go to view purchase options, it will take you to, you can buy the whole book itself for $30, you know, American. But if you scroll further down, it breaks down the purchase options uh, by feats, items, magic items. What's really cool is if you want to play Warforged really badly, you can just go down to the races and you can buy the Warforged race for $2 and that's added to your stuff and now you can pick Warforged as your race. The best part is if you were to buy just the Warforged race and decide to pick up the whole Eberron book later, it will be discounted based off of your individual purchases. So you're not wasting $2 to get the race and then buy the whole book itself. And then to view your character again, go into your collections, characters, we now have Vasad, our level one human cleric of the life domain. Thanks for joining us. Hopefully this helped somebody figure out the website a little bit easier. If there's something that you think I missed, you know, leave a comment below and maybe we'll do an addendum, or if you want us to break down even further certain sections of the maker, maybe we'll talk into about linking D&D Beyond to uh, your virtual tabletops. As I said, we are looking to play a game on the channel soon, so we will be using that web extension into Roll20 for maps and movement and things like that. But that's all for now. Thanks very much, and we'll see you at the table. Bye.